welcome to my another session in this session i am talking about the structure and function of hind brain so let's start different parts of the hind brain suppose that this is the cerebrum this is the pons this is the medulla and this is the spinal cord cerebrum this is the largest part of the brain and the second largest part of the brain which is the cerebellum so this is cerebellum this is cerebellum and this is the second largest part of the brain after cerebrum that's why such cerebellum is known as the lesser brain so this is the cerebellum this is cerebellum such cerebellum present dorsal to the pons so this is pons or pons varoli and this is medulla oblongata so here there is three part of the hind brain so one is the cerebellum second one is pons varoli and third one is medulla oblongata so hind brain has three important part cerebellum pons and medulla oblongata cerebellum and pons varoli collectively it forms the metencephalon this is meten cephalon and the medulla oblongata which forms myelin cephalon so the hind brain it has two part one is the meten cephalon another is the myelin cephalon meten cephalon which is composed of cerebellum and pons varoli the myelin cephalon which is composed of the single part this is the medulla oblongata this is cerebrum so now come to the cerebellum why such cerebellum it important and this is known as the second brain this is known as the second brain such cerebellum which controls the muscular activity the cerebellum it is known for its controlling power of the muscular activity such cerebellum it controls the body posture so body posture it is controlled by mainly cerebellum and cerebellum also maintains the muscular or the muscle tone cerebellum it known it is known for the muscle tone it also controls and coordinate voluntary muscular activities so the cerebellum it controls and coordinate our muscular activity or the voluntary muscular activity such cerebellum also important for the equilibrium of body so if cerebellum is injured then the man feels dizzy and loses the balance of the body so now come to the structure of the cerebellum let's draw the structure of cerebellum suppose that this is the pons and this is the medulla oblongata as you know cerebellum present dorsal to the pons and medulla suppose that this is the this is the cerebellum cerebellum the surface which is folded into number of parallel ridges so suppose that this is the 
फोल्डिंग ऑफ द सर्फेस ऑफ सेम एंड विच फॉर्म्स नंबर ऑफ पैरल रिजेस and which increase the surface area of cerebellum and these folds are known as the folia so these are known as the folia such so cerebellum so this is the cerebellum and in this position there is the presence of cerebrum so this is the position of cerebrum this is the position of cerebrum so cerebrum and cerebellum they are separated from each other by a transverse fissure so this is the transverse fissures which divide the cerebrum from cerebellum so transverse fissures which separate the cerebrum from the cerebellum and these transverse fissures there is also the deep extensions of dura mater also so there is the deep extensions of dura mater and this transverse fissures is known as the tentorium cerebelli so this is known as the tentorium cerebelli so this is known as the tentorium cerebelli so this is the tentorium cerebelli this is the transverse fissures deep fissures which divide or which separate the cerebrum from the cerebellum and this is the cerebellum such cerebellum also divided into different lobes so if you take the surface view then you see clearly see the different lobes of the see so this is the surface view of the cerebellum so this is the anterior lobe and this is the primary fissures posterior to anterior lobe there is the posterior lobe so this is the posterior lobe and these are the folds of the folia posterior to such cerebellum that is the another lobe which present posterior to the main body and this lobe which is known as the foculo nodular lobe so this is the foculo nodular lobe the anterior portion this is the anterior lobe and this is the posterior lobe and this is the foculo nodular lobe that is the one fissure which is known as the primary fissure so this is the primary fissure and there is another fissure 
which is known as the horizontal fissure. So this is the horizontal fissure. And there is another fissures. This is known as the postero. This is known as the postero lateral fissure. This is the postero lateral fissure. So, because of the presence of two fissure, one is the primary fissure, another is the postero lateral fissure. So, because of these two fissure, the cerebellum, which is divided into three lobes, one is the anterior lobe, another is the posterior lobe, and third one is the foculonodular lobe. The outer or the peripheral region of the cerebellum, this is the peripheral region of the cerebellum, this peripheral region, this contains the gray matter. So this is the gray matter and this region is known as the cerebral cortex. So this is the peripheral region which is known as the cerebellar cortex. Here the cerebellar cortex which get folded into a number of folds and which forms parallel ridges. These parallel ridges are known as fulia. And in order to the cerebral cortex, this region, this region is known as the cerebral medulla. So this is cerebellar medulla. So cerebral medulla it also contains the branching fibers of white matter. So this is the branching fibers of white matter. And it looks like a branches of tree. So that's why such fibers which is known as the arbor vitae. So this is the fibers of white matter. And this is known as the arbor vitae. This is known as the arbor vitae or the tree of life. This is also known as the tree of life. So this is the arbor vitae. This is the arbor vitae. Deep to the white matter, there is the irregular masses of gray matter. So these are and these forms cerebellar nuclei. So within the deep of the white matter inside the cerebellar medullar region, the irregular masses of gray matter present and which form cerebellar nuclei. So these are known as cerebellar nuclei and the fibers those comes out from the cerebellar nuclei the fibers those coming from the cerebellar nuclei they comes out through three pairs of pedicles comes out through three pairs of pedicles. Suppose that these are the three pairs of pedicles. So this is the superior cerebellar pedicle. So this is the superior cerebellar pedicle. And this is the inferior cerebellar peduncle and this is the median cerebellar peduncle. The superior cerebellar peduncle which contains the motor fibers. 
so such cerebellar superior cerebellar peduncles which contains the motor fiber and which carry the motor command from the cerebellum to the midbrain so this is the midbrain this region is the midbrain the inferior cerebellar peduncle so this is the inferior cerebellar peduncle this region this is the inferior cerebellar peduncles such inferior cerebellar peduncles which contains both motor and sensory motor and sensory fibers and which comes from the medulla and spinal cord so it, this is the medulla and this is the spinal cord and the medullar cerebral cortex which contains only the sensory fibers it contains the only sensory fibers the median cerebellar peduncle which connect the cerebellum with the pons so the it contains sensory fibers and such fibers comes out from the pons and this is the three pairs of peduncles which connect the cerebellum with the midbrain and this is the superior cerebellar peduncles containing the motor fibers and which carry the motor commands from the cerebellum to the midbrain and this is the median cerebellar peduncles which carries only the sensory fibers and carry the sensory information from the pons to the cerebellum and this is the inferior cerebellar peduncles which carry the both sensory and the motor fibers and such fibers comes out from the spinal cord and the medulla and which connect to the cerebellum so the because of the presence of the primary fissures and the posterior lateral fissures the cerebellum is divided into three lobes this is the anterior lobe and this is the posterior lobe and one lobe present behind such main body this is known as the foculonodular lobe and this is the this is the region of the nodulus and this is the region of the floculus so this is the two floculus and middle region is the nodulus at the center at the center of such cerebellum that is the central axis suppose that this is the central axis of the cerebellum and this is the extension of the gray matter and such central axis suppose that this is the central axis which connects suppose that this is the central axis which connects two lateral lobes of the cerebellum and such central axis is known as the vermis this is known as the vermis vermis and which connects the two lateral lobes of the cerebellum because of the presence of sagittal group known as the flat cerebelli because of the presence of flat cerebelli the cerebral or the cerebellum which is divided into two lateral lobes so one is the right cerebral hemisphere right cerebral hemisphere another is the left cerebral hemisphere both the cerebral hemisphere 
connected by the middle unbranched region this is known as the vermix or the this is the central axis so because of the presence of different uh, groups the cerebellum is divided into different lobes because of the presence of sagittal group which is known as the flax cerebelli which divide the cerebellum into right cerebral hemisphere and the left cerebral hemisphere both the cerebral hemisphere connected to each other by the axis central axis which is known as the vermix such vermix this is the extension of the gray matter and because of the presence of primary fissures and the posterior lateral fissures the cerebellum is divided into three lobes the anterior posterior and the floccolo nodular lobe the anterior lobe and the posterior lobe which controls the subconscious muscular or the skeletal mus movement of the skeletal muscles the anterior and the posterior lobe of the cerebellum which controls the movement the subconscious skeletal muscles movement and the foculo nodular lobe of the cerebellum it concerned with the equilibrium or the balance of the body so this is the structure and the function of the cerebellum now come to the another part of the hind brain this is the pons so now come to the pons or the pons varuli so this is the pons varuli and such pons varuli present superior to the medulla oblongata inferior to the cerebrum and such pons varuli which also present anterior to the cerebrum that's why such pons which forms the bridge in between two cerebellar hemisphere such pons also forms the bridge in between medulla and the midbrain and such pons also forms the bridge in between two cerebral hemisphere also so the pons it forms a bridge among the different parts of the brain like medulla uh, cerebellar hemisphere cerebral hemisphere midbrain and such pons which contains both longitudinal and the transverse fibers the longitudinal fiber so this is the one peduncle the superior cerebellar peduncle this is the inferior cerebellar peduncle so this is the both peduncles so these superior and the inferior peduncles these peduncles they contain the longitudinal fibers so longitudinal fibers of the pons which contains the both sensory and the motor fibers and such fiber connects cerebellum with the pons or with the midbrain and the middle cerebellar peduncle or the median cerebellar peduncle so this is the middle cerebellar peduncle which contains the sensory fiber and this is the transverse fiber so the transverse fibers of pons which connect the cerebellum with the pons and carry the sensory information from the pons to the cerebellum and such pons also it is important because of the some important function the pons which contains the pneumatic and the epineustic center the pons which contains pneumatic and the epineustic center these two centers is important for the regulation of the respiration so this is the center of the regulation of the respiration so the respiratory center present at the pons and these two centers are known as the pneumatic center and epineustic center and another important thing is that from pons the four pairs of cranial nerves four pairs of cranial nerves are developed the cranial nerve fifth sixth seventh eighth so fifth to eighth number of cranial nerves arises from the pons now come to the medulla so this is the medulla oblongata 
so this is the pyramidal in structure or the shape such medulla also known as the medulla oblongata this medulla oblongata present inferior to the pons and superior to the spinal cord and such medulla oblongata which forms the continuous bridge with the spinal cord to the pons or such medulla this is the connection of spinal cord with the brain or the brain stem this medulla oblongata so this is the medulla oblongata it is connected with the cerebellum through a peduncles and which is known as the inferior cerebellar peduncles such medulla oblongata it has intermixing of gray matter and the white matter internally the here the white matter actually present at the peripheral region in the medulla and the gray matter which present inside the or the inner region of the medulla so there is the intermixing of the gray matter and the white matter medulla oblongata it is also important because the roof of the medulla oblongata the roof the roof of the medulla oblongata suppose that this is the medulla oblongata and this is the roof the roof of the medulla oblongata which contains non nervous plexus the roof of the medulla oblongata it has the non nervous part such non nervous part is known as the posterior choroid plexus at the region of posterior choroid plexus there is the three opening there is the three opening the two lateral opening and one is the median so one is the median opening and two lateral opening is there the two lateral opening is known as the foramina of luschica so the two lateral opening is known as foramina of luschica and the one median opening which is known as the foramina of mesindai foramina of mesindai so roof of the medulla oblongata which contains the posterior choroid plexus and there is the three opening two lateral opening is known as the foramina of luschica and the one median opening which is known as the foramina of mesindai and this medulla it is also important because of it contains the center of uh, uh cardiac center it, it contains the cardiac center respiratory center and it also contains the vasomotor center so the medulla it is very important because it contains the cardiac center because and such cardiac center which controls the heartbeat of our body and it also contains the respiratory center which regulate the respiration of our body and it also contains the vasomotor vasomotor center which regulate the diameter of the blood vessels and it also it also contains the reflex center the reflex the reflex center for for solving peristalsis salivation and it also contains the secretion 
that's why medulla it is very important because of it contains the the cardiac center respiratory center vasomotor center and some of the reflex center 